In the early 1980s, Disney Records struck gold with the unexpected hit Mickey Mouse Disco. The multi-platinum album featured Disney-themed disco remixes and original tunes inspired by artists such as the Bee Gees and the Village People. Mickey Mouse Disco was Disney Records' most successful project at the time, as the division was mostly resigned to book and record versions of children's movies. Mickey Mouse Disco was so popular for Disney Records that the division immediately started looking for follow-up concepts. The team would find inspiration in another disco star, Olivia Newton-John, specifically her 1981 hit single, Physical, an innuendo-infused pop song that helped propel the popularization of aerobic workouts. This launched the home workout craze, with Jane Fonda and Jazzercise hooking America on health. Well, if you wanna boogie, get down on the dance floor, let's go! Recognizing the trend, Disney Records began to work on a new album of reimagined Disney classics, this time themed to the fitness fad. More than just music, the album would come with a 12-page booklet featuring instructions on how to do character-inspired workout moves. You could let Goofy show you how to hop like a frog, shake your tail feathers with Donald Duck, march like an elephant, do the bugaboo. Exercising had never been so fun. The record would be packed with dance-along songs, sing-along songs, and party-along songs. Disney Records had gone all out for their follow-up to Mickey Mouse Disco, and in 1982, they would release their exercise concept. And in no time at all, children throughout the country would be learning how to master size. This episode of Defunct TV is sponsored by Topps Disney Collect, a virtual card trading game for iOS and Android. Topps Disney Collect brings all of the fun of card collecting and trading straight to your phone, with unique and fun designs featuring your favorite Disney characters, including, of course, the Fab Five, with a set curated specifically for Defunct Land. Download Topps Disney Collect with the link in the description below. Mouser Size would be another hit for Disney Records, and immediately, the company began to expand the concept. Along with the album's release, Disney crowned a Miss Mouser Size to tour cities throughout the U.S. promoting fitness, well-being, and the record retailing at $5.95. The first Miss Mouser Size would be Tara Ann Lynn, who won Miss Hawaii the previous year. Lynn would work out with kids using a program developed in conjunction with the University of California's Physical Education Department. Fitness certificates were given for all children who joined in the activities, regardless of performance. And depending on the location of the program, children could win store coupons, free yogurt samples, and even a vacation to Walt Disney World. In addition to the official tour, teachers, librarians, and dance studios began to use the record and its corresponding 12-page book to motivate young children to exercise. Mousercise workout fashion was released in both kid and adult sizes. Specialized tapes were made for children's exercise classes, which would prompt at least one child to live out their dream of teaching fitness. Nine-year-old Floridian Jenny Balbone would be paid $4 a week to teach Mousercise at her local fitness center, and she was not prepared to let any of her pupils slack off. One local mom reviewed Balbone's class, saying, quote, You'd think the class would be easy since it's for kids and a fourth grader teaches it, but it's not. I've tried. It's not easy. Mousercise was a success, one that came at the perfect time for Walt Disney Productions. In 1982, the company was preparing programs to support the launch of the Disney Channel, a national premium cable channel to debut in April 1983. The channel would launch with 16 hours of programming, and in addition to beloved classics, the Disney Channel would showcase 13 original series in its premiere week. These series included Good Morning Mickey, Mousterpiece Theater, and Welcome to Pooh Corner. These programs would ensure that Disney's most famous characters were front and center on the new network. Shows like Disney Studio Showcase, Epcot Magazine, and Wish Upon a Star would provide documentary views on Disney magic. The game show Contraption would have kids compete in Disney trivia and physical challenges. You and Me Kid was a series dedicated to building interactive skills between parents and their children. The show would also encourage physical activity with its aerobic Let's Go segments. But the Disney Channel program that dedicated the most time to fitness and well-being was, of course, Mouser size. Hi, Masterpiece! Hi, Mimi! Let's Mouser size! Come on, everybody, and Mouser size! Let 
A Master Size TV show was an obvious choice for the new channel. It was relatively simple to produce, and it already had the music of the hit record at its disposal. Every morning on the Disney Channel at 7.30 a.m., Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy would lead a group of young children in an exercise to start their day. The show would be hosted by the brilliant Kellen Plashart. Hi, Master Sizers! Hi! Hi! How is everyone today? Hi! You all ready to Master Size? Growing up, Plashart's father was a talented dancer, choreographer, and stuntman. He would appear on the Dinah Shore show a year after Plashart's birth, performing his original comedic tableware percussion routine. He would dance with Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Debbie Reynolds, as well as be chained to musical legend Gene Kelly. In the 60s, he would play one of the dancing chimney sweeps with Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, and a dancing waiter with Barbara Streisand in Hello, Dolly. Consequently, Plushart would grow up surrounded by professional Hollywood dance and stunt talent. In her teens, Plushart would train to become a dancer herself, and in 1980, her father would start Action Unlimited, a dance and stunt studio in Canyon Country, Santa Clarita. In her early 20s, Kellen would model, perform stunts for films such as The Concrete Jungle, and instruct Action Unlimited's dance and jazzercise classes. Meanwhile, Disney was searching for a talented, TV-ready personality to become the new Miss Mousercise. Their search would bring them to Kellen, whose kind, energetic nature made her the perfect fit for the Mousercise TV show. Every episode of Mousercise would begin with Kellen in the Mickey Mouse Health Club, welcoming the Mousercisers, both at home and in her studio. She was often joined by her friend Steve, played by Steve Stark, who entered with some sort of problem or question to discuss later in the episode. Well, you know, Kellen, I went to buy this suit today in this dinky little store that was three floors underground and no air conditioning, and it was so hot. Oh, huh, well, what kind of suit did you get? What else? A sweatsuit. <laughs> See you later. Steve left as quickly as he appeared. At this point, Kellen would give a disclaimer to any first-time viewers about stopping if they experienced any shortness of breath, tiredness, dizziness, or pain, while encouraging those with medical or physical conditions to consult a doctor before joining in. Essentially, ask your doctor if mouser size is right for you. And if you have a medical problems or physical handicaps, make sure to ask your doctor before joining us. But most of all, have fun and enjoy yourselves! Because mouser sizing is for the whole family, so ask everybody to join in, okay? Kellen then moved to the floor and began stretching with the children in the studio. Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, and other characters would join in the back of the group. These characters were presented in their walk-around costumes featured in the Disney parks, and they would lack the articulation seen by the other Disney Channel shows, such as Welcome to Pooh Corner, which used radio-controlled puppets. All of the characters were given special workout costumes for the show. With perfect form for two minutes, Kellen demonstrated stretching actions to the kids and the large characters. The next sequence was higher energy, as Kellen led the group in actions targeting specific muscles and body parts. One, two, there you go! Extend them! Come on, enthusiasm, guys! There you go! The actions synced to pop songs and Disney Records hits. Kellen used her imagination and instructed the class of 30 to perform unique moves, such as walking like Frankenstein, pulling the weeds, being an elephant, playing the saxophone, conducting an orchestra, and flying a plane. The routine would often climax with a brief clip of an animated Disney cartoon. The exercise segment lasted the length of a full song. Afterwards, Kellen repeated her disclaimer before starting another round of workouts. Phew! Boy, I like that. Did you guys like that? Huh? Okay, well, I'm going to come down here. And remember, if you have any shortness of breath, or you get tired or dizzy, or have any kind of pain at all, make sure to stop. Each episode would include a featured song. These would be more recognizable tunes, such as a master size hit or an adult contemporary chart topper. By the way, today's featured song is What a Feeling off the soundtrack album from the movie Flashdance. Now let's bring our arms up, ribcage isolation to the right and to the left. Kellen would also get to pay tribute to her father's Mary Poppins role by exercising to the mouser size version of Step in Time. In the middle of the show, Kellen would introduce a rough animation of Mickey Mouse, which only served to introduce a Do You Know segment. The Do You Know segments would be narrated by Steve. Now here's something to keep in mind. Take a look at this interesting feature, especially from me to you. <laughs> Do you know how to be safe when you swim? 
will never swim alone and use the buddy system. The Do You Know segments would feature topics related to well-being, such as educating children on the benefits of a nutritious diet. But the segment would also branch out into other topics such as fire safety. In addition to the intro and Do You Know segments, Steve appeared in a semi-educational skit near the end of each episode with one or more of the Disney characters. Although their voices could be heard in songs on the series soundtrack, like the park characters of the time, Mickey and friends were mute in the live-action segments of Mouser Size. Don't you agree, Mr. Goo? Goofy was a frequent scene partner as he was prone to confusion and physical gags. Steve would have some kind of plan or project that he would laboriously explain to Goofy. Once left alone, Goofy would immediately mess up the plan without Steve's knowledge. For instance, in one episode, Goofy messed up the order of the answer cards for Steve's bicycle trivia. And for all you daredevils out there, there's only one way to ride down a steep hill. Goofy? <laughs> the skit sections of the show took place in kitchen, locker room, or living room sets. In the episode focused on fire safety, Minnie would dump Mickey, as his home had fallen into disarray and had become a fire hazard. For example, Mickey was keeping old papers next to cans of gasoline and blocking exits with cardboard boxes. And Minnie had finally had enough. However, after Mickey cleaned up the clutter, Minnie gave him another chance. Mickey seems to have taken care of everything. Except for one thing. He still forgot his date with Minnie. The show would also feature a floor exercise segment where each child could stretch on a mat and perform a story routine. How wonderful! Now remember to take off your shoes just like we have, so you can point your toes and stretch out your feet real good. And if you don't have a mouse size mat at home, a nice big towel will do. In a story routine, Kellen would imagine her body in various scenarios in an ethereal ritual that allowed her and the children to achieve transcendence. In one episode, Kellen and the kids would pretend to be ants marching toward a picnic while marching their hands in and out. They would make ant tracks in an imaginary cake and try all their favorite foods around the picnic table. The ants were then stuck in a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Kellen showed the kids how to tug on their hands until they fell into the ice chest. They would then have to swim the breaststroke to get out. Luckily, episodes would also feature a cool down, usually to the Harry Nilsson esque song, Cool Down. Boy, am I glad that's over with. Let's extend our feet out in front of us, and the cool down is the same every day, so you can work it out with us before every sport you do. Ready? And reach up to the sky. You know, it's very important that when you exercise that you have a cool down number like this to relax your heartbeat and bring it on down. Every episode will conclude with Kellen speaking directly to the home viewer and exclaiming, keep on mousercising. You know, you don't have to be a kid to enjoy mousercising. So let's make mousercise a real family experience. So until next time, keep on mousercising! Yeah! As a goodbye, Kellen would initiate a high-energy workout performed to the mousercise theme. Steve, Mickey, and all of the children would join in and dance for a minute before the credits would roll. The production would be organized so that the series would shoot five 26-minute episodes in a single day. On top of this, to retain her physique, Kellen would exercise an additional two to three times a day. The show would tape in 30-episode blocks. In between block tapings, Kellen, Mickey, and the team would head out for a 30-city tour promoting the series and the Disney Channel premium cable service. Kids would flock to malls and event centers, excited to see their favorite Disney characters in person. Kellen and Mickey would even visit children's hospitals. Kellen would continue to make appearances at her father's Action Unlimited studio, now promoting the Mouser Size series. During Mickey's birthday celebration at Disneyland, Disney would give out Mouser Size headbands for children. The series would shoot multiple blocks of episodes, which continued to air seven days a week. It appears that the majority of episodes were recorded from 1983 to 1984. Later episodes of the series would feature a character named Coach. Coach would also teach lessons in fitness. It is unclear as to how many episodes of the series were recorded, as much of the series is considered lost media. There are only a handful of episodes on YouTube, which were scanned from deteriorating home recordings. One iteration of Mouser Size would be officially released on VHS and Laserdisc in the mid-80s. After wrapping on the series, Disney would create a new 50-minute long workout video starring Kellen, Mickey, and a quintet of kids. The kids would be older than the children that had appeared on the Disney Channel show, and the focus was more on performance than it was in the original series. The Mouser Size tape would not bring back Steve, Coach, nor any Disney characters aside from the yellow jumpsuit and Mickey Mouse. 
The tape would also drop any stories or lessons that the TV show had, replacing them with health tips presented by Kellen, including a segment teaching kids how to take their pulse. Now count the number of pulses in your vein for six seconds, and we'll see how well your heart is doing. Ready? Go! Okay, now whatever your number was, add a zero and you know how many heartbeats you should have in one minute. The imaginative actions and story routines would also be missing. Overall, the video seemed geared toward a slightly older audience than the show. The music, location, and logo for Mousercise would also change, appearing more in the vein of 80s exercise clubs. In addition to the video would be a picture-in-picture -picture graphic displaying close-ups of proper form. Kellen would be back as her usual smiling, excited self, telling kids to quote, keep those buttocks tight. Her hair would also be noticeably larger and more 80s. For the last 10 minutes of the tape, Kellen would teach a dance number incorporating all the moves that were previously taught. She would practice the routine with kids in front of large mirrors, and a music video dance sequence complete with neon costumes and colorful lighting would end the program. The show would continue to air the same early 80s episodes of Master Size on the Disney Channel until the late 1990s, when the channel made its transition from a premium service to basic cable. However, Master Size was not forgotten. Disney would attempt to reboot the album version of Master Size in 2005 with a 12-track CD, giving more contemporary Disney songs such as A Whole New World and Go the Distance remixes with exercise interstitials. The CD would also remix classics from the original album, including the Master Size theme, Ducks Dance 2, and I Wanna Be Like You 2. The CD would fail to reach anywhere near the popularity of the original. In 2007, Kellen's father, Alex Bouchard, would pass away unexpectedly in his sleep. Two years later, in 2009, Kellen herself would follow at the age of 50 from cancer. Despite claiming that she was being considered for roles in Disney films, she would only appear in a few more film and TV roles after Mouser Size. While Disney would mention the show from time to time over the years, it would not be until 2020 that Mouser Size would be referenced significantly. During Disneyland After Dark's 80s night, Mickey would don his classic yellow jumpsuit and step in time for photo ops in front of windows inspired by the old studio. Despite no official release of the original series, Mouser Size would see a resurgence in popularity during the COVID-19 quarantine, with elementary teachers using the album to instruct Mouser Size for their students over the internet as a way for them to be active in their homes. It's likely many of these teachers were Mouser Sizers when they were the age of their students. Mouser Size was a simple show with a simple goal, the most practical of any of the lessons being taught on the Disney Channel at the time. The popularity of the album and the series entertained and energized generations of children who learned to look at fitness in a fun and exciting way, thanks to Mickey, Kellen, and friends. Until next time, keep on Mouser Sizing, yeah! This episode of Defunct TV is sponsored by Topps Disney Collect. If you're a fan of Disney animation or Disney history, then Topps Disney Collect is the perfect app for you. Topps Disney Collect lets you collect cards with your favorite characters and trade them with other Disney fans, including me, username The Purge. There are rare cards that feature exclusive art and vintage sets with nostalgic character designs, such as the new Fab Five collection curated specifically for our fans. Collect all of the cards in a set and win additional awards. The app is free to download, and every day you will get free cards and coins in the arcade or by completing missions. Make sure to download Topps Disney Collect on iOS or Android today, and follow me to start training. Username, The Purge.